to Star Wars list building with Mike. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day. Today we are going to go ahead and take a look at building a rebel list. And I think today what I would like to do is I would like to build a list centered around the um, the, the Rogue One theme. Um, you know, we, we see... One of the, the few Galactic Civil Wars battles that we, we see on screen is the Battle at Scarif. And I think it would be really cool if we could build a competitive list that was um, th that allowed us to kind of bring that theme to the table in a way that is um, competitive. So, um, without further ado, we are at uh, legionhq.thefifthtrooper.com um, as always, and today we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and jet into a rebel list. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna click on rebel here. <clears throat> so we're building a Rogue One list. Uh, clearly, that means we probably want to take a look at um, where we want to start is kind of our theme and. Clearly, that's going to be the characters. Um, there are a total of, I believe, five characters in Legion that are in Rogue One. Um, specifically, uh, those five characters are um, Cassian, Jin, um, K2, uh, who actually doesn't show up here unless you have Cassian selected. Um, and then there are two um, uh, characters that you can add to the... Pathfinders units in Bistin and Pow that are also from Rogue One. So uh, let's start with um, with a commander for for this. And so we're doing Rogue One. Um, let's you know we don't see a lot of Jin these days. So let's start with Jin, even though um, in today's competitive environment she's not considered super competitive. Um, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, so we'll start with Jin, who instead of being the 130 points is now 100. Um, and let's wait to get her out. So she starts at 100 points. Nothing super crazy here. Um, you know, I think it might behoove us to kind of look at her command cards real quick to see um, what sort of synergies we can build out. Her 1 pip doesn't really have a ton of synergy, but her 2 pip and 3 pip um, both have some super synergy. So trust goes both ways and complete the mission. If we just take a look at them here. Um, trust goes both ways. Uh, Jin Urso gains Inspire 2 when Jin Urso issues orders to another friendly trooper unit. That, you, that unit gets Teamwork Jin Urso, which is super good. Teamwork, if you are unaware, allows you to uh, duplicate uh, like aims and dodges on the characters that have teamwork together. So if Jin takes the aim action or the quick thinking action, you know she, she duplicates those tokens on whoever has teamwork with her. Um, complete the mission is one of the best command cards in the game. Um, it's probably the main reason to take Jyn Erso right now. Um, Jyn Erso gains low profile when a friendly trooper unit is issued an order and may gain one suppression token. When a friendly trooper unit with a face-up order token activates, during its activation it cannot become panicked or suppressed. At the end of that unit's activation, it may remove one suppression token. So basically, like if you play this on turn six, it makes you like panic proof for finishing objectives and stuff. It literally allows you to complete the mission, um, which is super cool, super powerful in the right circumstances. It's not always going to be super powerful, but when it is super powerful, it's amazing. So um, again, I believe this specifies trooper units. So we're going to be focusing on trooper units again, um, this, this build. So that's good to keep in mind. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, we can also, I think since we're building a Rogue One list, let's just throw Cassian in here. Um, Cassian, unlike Jin, I'm actually going to add a gun to his profile because the gun is sort of audio take um, and uh, it flips. So um, he's got this sweet sniper um, that can reconfigure into the pistol. Um, it's 10 points, making him the same cost as Jin, and it allows us to... Um, it's just really good, frankly. It's got high velocity. Um, it does have cumbersome, but he's got. He's also got marksman. Um, he just does a lot of damage, um, and it's efficient. So we'll take the sniper, and it's loadouted. So we'll load out. Um, I mean, 
technically it's, it's flippable, so you don't have to do the loadout for this. But we, we may end up using loadout on Cassian eventually. And uh, since we're, again, doing Rogue One, we'll throw K2 in here. Um, K2 is also um, pretty good. He's uh, the, the big thing about um, K2 is he has Incognito. Incognito allows you to basically not be eligible to be attacked until you attack or somebody attacks you at range or gets within range one and then attacks you. Um, so you can be kind of stealthy with K2 and he allows you um, to play towards objectives that you might otherwise not normally be able to do. So uh, that's K2. Again, we're going to um, come back to outfitting these guys with object with uh, upgrades once we kind of fill out the rest of the list and have an idea of what we want to do. So, um, let's add, you know, we, we talked about Pow and Bistan, and I kind of wanted to touch on them real quick. So let's add a unit of Pathfinders in here, um, since those are the eligible unit for those characters. And um, just to talk about Pathfinders really quick, um, so they've got Danger Sense 3. Uh, you should act like this keyword isn't here. It's really good. It's a bit of a bonus. Nothing crazy. Um, Dauntless is a super excellent keyword, allowing them to basically, when they're suppressed, they can take, it, it's a it's like Compel for Imperials, but it's only for this specific, specific unit. It's a really great keyword. Um, and, and maybe their most defining keyword is Infiltrate, um, which uh, you'll note that Jin also has Infiltrate. Um, Cassian has Covert Ops, which allows him to become an operative and can infiltrate, and K2 has um, detachment Cassian Andor, which means he's got to be set up at range one, uh, a move speed one of Cassian, I think. Um, and that basically allows him to also have infiltrate, since if Cassian infiltrates, K2 then has to infiltrate. So at this point, we have four units that are all infiltrating. Um, to go back to the Pathfinders, though, we've got two options here. We've got Biston and Pow, and to inform our decision on which one we want to take first, um, it is also important to note that the short slash long range config for the Pathfinders is now free. You should always take this on Pathfinders. Like it's just, it's absolutely free. And I believe, um, now that I'm thinking about it, Jin's config is also now free. I forgot about that for a second there. So we'll, we'll slap that on her too. Um, so she gets a free gun, they get a free gun. It was kind of like one of the points concessions that I think was made to make these units a little bit better since the in the first round they didn't shine super well. They brought the cost of these configurations and, and gun slots down. So what this config allows us to do on the Pathfinders, most importantly, the, the range 2 config is really not very good. You're almost never going to use it. It's the range 4 config that's important here. Um, it allows them to shoot at range 4, when if we look at their unit card, normally they're shooting two white dice each at range 3. <clears throat> so, um, if we bear that in mind, our choices for upgrades are Bistan and Pow. Um, Pow is a leader, which means he becomes the unit leader. Both of these guys are two wounds now, which is, I believe, an errata. Um, and Pow is a red and a white and has Inspire 1. So he helps you out, you out with some suppression stuff. Um, but he only gives us a red and a white die. Bistan, on the other hand, uh, is not a leader. He's just a heavy. He exhausts to use his weapon, which is black, four white, impact one, ion one. Um, he's also six points more expensive. However, uh, his gun's a lot better. So in this vein, I'm going to start with Bistan because I personally know that Bistan is a lot better. Pow at range four, one red and, what is it? Five white dice is not very good. Um, it's basically like a stormtrooper squad that you're putting in your special forces squad slot at range four, which is like fine, but it's not super interesting. When you have Biston at range four, you got eight white dice and a black die at range four, which is a lot more interesting in my opinion. So we're gonna take Biston. Um, and, and notably, because Biston exhausts, um, this squad may end up wanting to take the recover action. So again, once we start building out upgrades and stuff, similarly to like what we talked about last time with uh, building Iden out in a 
way to take advantage of like free recovers and stuff. Cassian has a card that allows um, special forces units to get a free recover, so we can we can kind of kit those pathfinders out to be able to abuse Biston's exhaust weapon by like recovering it for free. So um, we may uh, revisit that, but. The most important thing now, now that we kind of have a central core to our list, is we have to add actual core to our list. Um, and if you've been listening to Scoundrels um, lately, you might have heard us talk about vigilance, situational awareness, rebel troopers, um, and stuff like that, uh, which are really good these days. Um, I'm not sure they're going to fit into this list. I would like to try to fit them into this list because I think um, they're the most competitive type of rebel trooper. So let's go ahead and see what that kind of looks like. You know, uh, you'll know we've got four activations and we're already sitting at 350 points. So we've got to make sure that kind of the rest of the list is sort of lean um, in order to make this work. We need this really to be a 10 activation list, I think, in order to, you know, do what we want to do with it. So let's take a look. Core units. Um, we're going to add a Rebel Trooper. Um, and... We are going to equip it with the DLT 20A. Um, I guess uh, just to talk about the Rebel Trooper options really quick, um, the Ion Trooper and the SX-21 are not very good. Um, they're cheap, but they... So Rebel Troopers, the, the shotgun, Rebel Troopers don't really like being up close and personal. And, and if you're going to be that up close and personal, you probably just wanted the Troopers to begin with. The Ion Gun... Um, is super niche, you know, and it exhausts, uh, just, and unless you're in like a super armor or armor or droid meta, I would avoid that gun entirely. Um, the Z6, uh, is definitely the cheapest of the available Rebel Trooper options that is good. Um, however, the DLT-20A allows us to poke at range four with critical, um, it's just a super good gun. It's super reliable. Um, so I'm going to take the DLT 20A here. Um, and if you've been, again, if you've been listening to scoundrels and stuff, uh, I am going to also add a rebel trooper captain here. And just to kind of identify exactly what the rebel trooper captain does, uh, it is, becomes the leader. So it, and it adds a mini. So this rebel trooper squad will have six dudes in it, which is, um, Something we haven't seen a ton of in Legion up until this point, but I do believe the meta is shifting in that direction, at least for Civil War era factions. And he adds a training uh, upgrade to our unit, which is cool. And you can also exhaust him to... Um, <clears throat> when you activate, you cannot remove suppression tokens or be suppressed during that activation. Uh, this is important because it allows us to, like, pseudo act like like a phase two clone or a droid trooper um and it makes it so that we can um really interact when we need to uh up until this point it's been very easy to just like lay down a suppression on a rebel trooper or a stormtrooper and know that they are only going to get one action most of the time and that really makes those units not very good um, in a world where everybody else is taking two actions. So this Rebel Trooper Captain allows us to continue to be taking actions when we need it. And paired with Complete the Mission, we kind of get like two shots at it because we can use the Captain one time and then we can use Complete the Mission again if we need to to really kind of bump that up. So we're taking the Captain and I am also going to take... Um, so in our training slot that we gained from the Captain... I'm going to add situational awareness in here. Um, and then I'm going to add another one. So this is 79 points. I'm going to add another squad that is identical to that. Um, and because I've done that, I'm actually going to come up here on Jin, And in her command slot, I'm going to tack on Vigilance. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is once these Rebel Trooper units gain dodge tokens, we're just going to keep them every turn with Vigilance for the rest of the game. And if you don't know what Vigilance does, um, Vigilance, um, hopefully that's big enough on the screen, it might not be. Uh, during the end phase, choose either one friendly trooper unit at range one to two, or up to two friendly core units, uh, core trooper units at range one to two. Each chosen unit uh, does not remove one dodge token. So we've got two core units that are eligible for that. Um, and because they have Nimble, 
and uh, situational awareness, which allows them to spend their dodge tokens against critical results. Re unless we're being shot at by an enemy that has high velocity, which doesn't allow us to spend dodge tokens, even if they're crits, we always get to use our dodge token to remove a hit. It's like we're in cover three if we're in heavy cover, which is super powerful. Should also be noted that Jin also has Nimble, and we can use Vigilance to retain a dodge token on her if we want. Um, so this Vigilance is pretty flexible in that regard. And due to that, I think we also should probably stable situational awareness to her because she, you know, can just quick thinking for a dodge token and then keep it all game if we want. So we can kind of decide how we're going to use Vigilance at the beginning of a game in order to, you know, have it play out the way we want or need it to. Okay, so uh, we're at six activations. We still need another core unit. Um, so I am... Um, going to add a third Rebel Trooper unit with the same loadout we just talked about, um, which is going to put us at 600 points um, with 200 points and three activations left to kind of get to where we want to be. Um, so what do we do next? We kind of have four core units, like these Pathfinders are like a kind of a beefed up core unit. Um, you'll note that the, the points difference between the Pathfinder unit we have and our core units is only seven at this point. So um, the Pathfinders are a little bit more of a specialized Rebel Trooper unit. And this is a trend that I think we're going to be seeing a lot of moving forward is that core units and special forces units, like the, the gap between them and like what they do is kind of shrinking um, unless we're talking about strike teams. So uh, which is kind of interesting and a little bit fascinating. I'm not sure what that really means for the game yet, but, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's just an interesting kind of thing because we're seeing a lot of, you know, phase twos, um, you know, B twos, um, captain storms, captain troop rebels kind of start being very, a very prominent thing we're seeing. And all of those units are like, basically as expensive or very close to being as, as expensive as like loaded special forces in those factions. So uh, it's just an interesting trend. So, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and do uh, add two strike teams here. Um, so <laughs> normally if we were like, if this was like a casual theme thing, I might actually put sabs in this list because sabs, uh, saboteurs um, feel a little bit more Rogue One-y, you know, planting charges, blowing them up. I don't think they're going to be super great in a list where we don't have three of them because we're also running Pathfinders. And this is one of the things with, like, limitations between um, uh, just with, like, the Force Org chart. Um, because we can't have four Special Forces, I'm only going to take... I'm going to take Snipers instead because they're much better as, like, one or two of us. Um, saboteurs, you really want like two guys planting bombs and then one saboteur that's like safe that can always hit the detonator. Um, and we're not going to have access to that. And you also want to like build medics into your list and stuff for it. And I'm not sure we're going to have the points for that. As you can see, we're at nine activations at 696 of 800. So um, we have one activation left to kind of bake into this list. I think that I personally would like to see another Rebel Trooper unit in here, and I'm going to put it in here with the same kit that we have been working with. Um, and that'll leave us with 25 points. Uh, and it should be noted that basically our Rebel Troopers already have a ton of upgrades on them, and our strike teams don't need them. So we're just going to look at our original four for upgrades. And um, I, I'm going to go to the Pathfinders first. Um, because Bistan has um, a synergy with recovering uh, with Cassian. So if we take a look at this, um, you know, I don't think there's a t We could give them targeting scopes, maybe? Um, I don't know how many aim tokens they're really going to have access to, so I'm not sure how often we're going to be able to use it. I do think that I would like to put offensive push in their um, training slot. Um, you, you, so 
Again, kind of going back to the whole like danger sense thing, I don't believe danger sense is good enough to like build around. Some people may be like, oh, you should put duck and cover in because you can take a suppression and then use it. Uh, I think that's a waste of points, frankly. Um, you could do that if you want. I'm not saying you can't. I just have found that too often uh, having an extra white die in your pool doesn't do enough. Um, so I'm going to opt for offensive push here. And so the, the other option here is we could put an HQ uplink in the list. It's 10 points. We only have 21 left. So I'm going to hold on that. I think the other option for these guys that we want to potentially look at is recon intel, um, which will allow us to kind of like alpha strike with Bistan and then like, so you infiltrate recon into range three with scout, take your... Uh, it's what? So path if you're at range three, you get eight white dice plus Bistan, which is, so it's 12 white dice and a black die. Um, and then you can move away. So, and like hopefully around like a line of sight blocker or something. So you can do some cool stuff with that. So recon intel might be, might be a play here. We'll see about that. I want to kick Cassian and K2 out first because we've only got 21 points left. So Cassian. Um, Cassian's sort of interesting um, Offensive push is like Was stapled onto him When scout moves could be used To trigger tactical They can't anymore So you can't like get aim tokens Through offensive push With um, For your sniper It's only good for the pistol So it's a little less good um, You know nothing here super screams that like we have to take it um and in the gear slot i'm kind of in the same boat scopes doesn't help us because we've got marksmen um everything else here is kind of niche so i think we can kind of not worry too much about cassian k2 on the other hand um only has a melee weapon he's got overpower which is four red which is super good um however i would love to give him a gun and Notably, uh, Jin's Blaster is five points cheaper if Jin Urso is in your army. Um, it's got Pierce 1 and Suppressive and Range 2. Um, this gun's really good. Uh, it's kind of like a mini Bosk gun uh, that's only Range 2, clearly. Um, but uh, we're going to throw it on K2 and have a field day, hopefully. So... Um, we have 16 points left. I would also like to have a bid with this list. Um, just because of how it works. Uh, I think that uh, with that being said, I do think it's kind of a flexible list. We can do a lot with it. We can respond to a lot of threats. So let's go ahead and put an uplink and put recon intel on the pathfinders. Make them kind of, you know, uh, th this is a robust unit. It's 102 points now, but we do get a free recover. So um, I'm pretty happy with this list. Uh, I, you know, we're gonna rate it once we get through all the command cards and battle deck and stuff. But um, I'm not. I I wouldn't say it's super super competitive, but it's good. It's decent, um, and it's a Rogue One list, right? Like this is basically what was on Rogue One. Um, you know, some people uh, may want to like try vets out instead. I I'm not sure vets are like in a super great place right now. But Rebel Troopers with Captains certainly are. So um, here's our Rogue One list. Let's take a look at command cards real quick. I actually think the command cards for this one kind of build itself. But um, in our one pip slot, we have the options of Ambush, Rebellious, Sabotage Communications, or Crack Shot. <clears throat> um, crack Shot, uh, Cassian's one pip is the best of these four. Like, hands down, not close. Um... It gain, casting and or gains Gunslinger, one aim token. At the end of his activation, he may gain one suppression token, and he gains uh, a standby token. Um, it's just, it's really good. So we're going to take Crack Shot <laughs> off the bat, which leaves us with Ambush, Rebellious, Sabotage, Communications. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't think Rebellious is all that great. Um... With that being said, you know, sabotage communications is kind of like niche 
and it only gives orders to operatives or special forces units, which isn't a huge deal in this list because Cassian is likely going to be an operative a lot of the time. But um, I'm going to take Rebellious. It's it's on theme, gives Jin charge, and she can it gives her like a pseudo standby effect. Um, in the right situation, it can be awesome. Um, but this is this is kind of meh. This is a meh pick. I wish we had something better we could put in this slot. But we don't. So we're going to take a Rebellious. Um, our two pip options are Push, Trust Goes Both Ways, Turning the Tide, and Last Stand. Um, turning the Tide is automatically out. Uh, it issues orders to two support or heavy units, of which we have none. So that's not an option. Um, and Trust Goes Both Ways and Last Stand are basically both better versions of Push. Um, outside of the fact that push is a little bit more flexible. Um, Trust Goes Both Ways is the teamwork card that we talked about. Um, so we're going to take that, and it's notable that there's a little bit of a combo here in that uh, uh, K2 has teamwork Cassian. Um, so if you were to teamwork Jin with Cassian and Jin gets a dodge token then Cassian gets a dodge token and then K2 gets a dodge token you can do a bit of a like you know dodge token aim token chain thing going on there with that so um that's kind of a powerful combo um and the last stand is when Cassian and or issues an order to a commander or operative unit that unit gains indomitable which means they roll red rally dice instead of white rally dice and grants one aim one dodge or one suppression token for each wound token that unit has up to three um so this is allows us to like spam a bunch of tokens and again with k2's teamwork card in, you can end up with you know a bunch of stuff um so i'm gonna take last stand here uh three pips are actually sort of interesting um this is definitely where the most choices are going to come into play so we've got assault which is you know just kind of a generic flexible option um Covering fire is interesting. Uh, after a friendly core unit performs a range attack, another friendly unit at range one to two may gain one dodge token. Um, so you can you can really lay down a lot of dodge tokens, and with situational awareness, dodge tokens become a lot more valuable. And those that you don't spend, you can keep with vigilance. So covering fire is a little bit more interesting these days. With that said, um, we will not be able to order give um, orders to like our most uh, influential units if we take cover and fire on a three pip turn so i'm a little hesitant to go that route um so we already talked about how good complete the mission was it's a super awesome card one of the best command cards in the game um this is probably almost an auto include uh we'll take a look at the last two and uh, decide so the last two are cassian and k2 specific the first one is volunteer mission when cassian and or issues an order to a commander operative or special forces unit that unit recovers gains danger sense one and may gain one suppression token um so this is big because it allows units to recover the biggest thing here is rebel pathfinders um, it allows us to recover our hq uplink our offensive push and bistan um, which is pretty good and there's nothing else that really combos with it in our list um, other than it like rem it's going to remove suppression tokens which is fine and it gives people danger sense one um, since most of our units already have danger most most of the units that are going to be targeted with this card already have danger sense it's not that big a deal um, but it's interesting so this is really here for the recover action on the pathfinders um, so, and then the last one we have access to is Sacrifice, um, which basically allows K2SO to gain Guardian 4. At the end of K2SO's activation, you may choose another friendly commander or operative unit at range 1 and in line of sight of K2SO. If you do, defeat him, and enemy units cannot perform ranged attacks against the chosen unit until the end of this round. Um, this is like a really cool combo card, but we don't have a unit, like... Like, if we had Luke Skywalker in our list, I would be tempted to maybe take Sacrifice. Because making Luke Skywalker immune to ranged attacks for a turn could be really good. Um, in this list, we don't have a ton to protect that's actually better than K2. So I'm going to kind of leave it at home. Uh, because of that, we're going to take Complete the Mission and Volunteer Mission. Again, this command hand sort of builds itself. 
not super crazy. There's no real reason to change any of this. It's just three, all three of Cassian's cards, all three of Jin's cards. I hope going through it like that kind of gave you a reason as to why, but, you know, um, nothing crazy. So, let's take a look at objectives. Um, so, we, we've got four units with Infiltrate, basically. Um, which is which is cool because we have a lot of flexibility when it comes to stuff. Um, what stands out to me immediately is we should take recover the supplies because we not only can like mess with the middle box, but we can mess with boxes our opponent sets up. Um, so and we can like drop in on them if we wanted to. Um, I wouldn't recommend dropping straight in on them, but it allows us to threaten them at interesting angles. Um, so we'll take recover the supplies. Hostage exchange is just out the window because the hostage unit is going to kill our infiltrate bubble because the host their hostage unit will count for the range three for infiltrate. So we don't want hostage exchange. Hostage exchange. It's just out immediately. Um, bombing run, also not great with infiltrate because you can't put bombs on things that are, they've got to start in your deployment zone. So bombing run's not great for us either. Which leaves breakthrough, intercept, KP, sabotage, and payload. Um, breakthrough is sort of interesting. We can like split our army into two with infiltrate if we wanted to and kind of play like have a team that plays defense and a team that plays offense. Um, that can get a little dicey. Uh, I think... I personally kind of like intercept because it allows you infiltrate allows you to kind of like set up a forward forward ball work so you kind of are already like dug in um, when they get to you and so you can kind of like build out a front there which is pretty good with intercept um, I also like that for payload I think that that's pretty good too you can kind of contest their payload early so we're gonna take payload as well um, and so we've got one more choice, which is Sabotage, Breakthrough, or KP. Um, I personally, we've got a lot of range force shooting here. I'm going to take Sabotage. I just think it's like always a decent choice if you're playing only infantry, because you can generally hide everybody if you try. Um, we can also like infiltrate on top of our VAPs, repair them, and get out immediately instead of wasting actions to move to our evaporators. Um, so that is also pretty handy. Um, deployments. We want to emphasize deployments here that are going to help with our infiltrate. So um, we want small deployment zones is kind of what that comes down to. So like um, disarray is generally pretty good. Um, so we'll take disarray. Um, I think Danger Close can also be sort of interesting, so we'll also take Danger Close here, I think. Um, and then we'll take... I like advanced positions with, with Infiltrate, just generally, because you get Scout on top of the Infiltrate, so you can like do some additional cool stuff. So we'll take that. And then our last card here, I think we're just going to make... Um, long march um because we can again form a forward bulwark and it's hard for them to kind of hedge us out um so uh condition cards um yeah so condition cards here um i i like supply drop we can infiltrate on immediately onto the supply drops uh which saves us actions in the long run so that's really good um, I like that. Um, rapid reinforcements is like, I, I don't know. Um, it, it would allow us to like pseudo infiltrate some rebel troopers with the rest of our stuff if we wanted to. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, let's, let's do that. Let's take rapid reinforcements. Um, we could take, uh, war weary. Um, but I think our troopers are often going to be, like, kind of far away, so I, I, I don't love that. 
Hostile environment, also not great. I think limited viz actually kind of works in our favor. Like, we have ranged weapons, but we're not, like, relying on the range. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take limited viz. Um, just because I think most um, armies that shoot at range probably, like, do it better than us. So we'll take limited viz here. Um, and... And then I'm going to take Minefield because I think that it kind of, first of all, it's easy for us to um, uh, get around the dodge tokens with our situational awareness, vigilance, dodge token thing going on. And it also, like, allows us to buffer, like, where we're going to infiltrate, um, making them run through mines to, like, get to our infiltrate trading units is kind of in interesting so we'll take that and i also think it plays into the theme of the list a little bit so there we go we've got our rogue one um uh list here um and you know uh in our next segment we'll go ahead and break it down and see where it ends up all right everybody so we have gone ahead and built our rogue one list and what we're gonna do now is we're just going to kind of go over um, the uh, various star ratings that we did in our last episode for um, the Imperial list we built. And we're going to kind of go over them in this episode so that we can um, kind of draw some comparison points. As we go through the series, you're going to start seeing, you know, how certain lists um, fare on numerical metrics. Again, the numerical metrics are not... Uh, end all be all um, like things for these metrics, but they allow us to kind of get a get a good starting point for um, where the lists fall in in their viability on the table. So um, like last time we're gonna go, gonna go in the same order. So we're gonna start off with order control for this list. Um, and for order control, we're going to give our Rogue One list a two out of five stars. Um, we have three different heroes, Jin, Cassian, and K2. Additionally, we have an, another focus piece in these Rebel Pathfinders with Bistan um, and all the kind of like cool upgrades that we've, we've put on them. So we've got four pieces on any given turn that do not have or need orders and we don't have any real great ways to sort that out um it's notable that the pathfinders have an uplink attached um we're gonna be wanting to use that uplink probably on our one one pip turns with Jin and Cassian with you know it, I think it's likely that um the pathfinders uplink like on Cassian's crack shot turn and then we don't have orders on Jin and K2, um, which can be a problem. So on, on some of the important turns, we're going to have like half of our pieces that we want orders on, not, not having orders, which is a little bit of a problem. So we're going to give this list a 2 out of 5. It's definitely a little bit worse at order control than um, the vader Iden list that we did in Episode 1. Um, so... Not so great on the order control front. Um, Rebels in Empire generally are not super great in contrast to their brethren from the Clone Wars. So that's not to be unexpected. Um, so let's take a look at the overall firepower of this list. Um, and so we had measured overall firepower um last episode by how many average hits if everything in your army fired at full health in a single turn you would um you would get and so um just as like a like a compare and contrast point in the list we built in episode one if every single unit fired not including like keywords like pierce and um a sharpshooter and precise and things like that that list would have gotten 24.25 hits on average if everything in that army um swung his lightsaber attacked whatever 
This list um, is significantly higher. Uh, this list uh, comes out to 32.5 hits in a given turn if everything in the list fires its full barrage. Um, so we're talking about an increase of about about a third, so about 33% if we're firing on all cylinders. Um, and this list has a little bit more range to it, frankly. Uh, you know, everything in this list has a range 4 plus gun on it other than K2 and Jin. So we're not only firing on all cylinder. Well, I mean, like, clearly the Rebel Troopers are only firing DLTs at range 4. That's okay. Um, you know, there, there's just, I think, a little bit more range firepower on this list generally. So... Uh, it's getting three out of five stars in the um, overall firepower category. Um, it's definitely, I think this list is more where you want to be um, when building any list as far as what is my raw damage potential. Um, so I think that this list definitely has that going for it. Um, our next metric is overall defense. And last episode we measured out that the list we built had 87 effective health points, again, not including abilities like deflect or nimble or dodge tokens and stuff like that, because those are variables you can't really take into account and staple numbers to. Um, so these are just pure, like, if we don't have any dodge tokens, we don't have danger sense, what is our raw health pool? Um, with armor saves. Uh, last episode, that list had 87 effective health points. This list has 72. So we've lost uh, about an eighth of the effective health points that we had um, from from last episode to this episode in this list. Um, I'm going to give this list a two out of five. I think uh, if it was a year and a half ago, it might be closer to a three out of five just because... Um, Danger Sense and uh, Nimble um, on Jin would have counted for a lot more, but these days the first attack coming in on you kind of slams you pretty hard, particularly if you've got white saves to 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 be rolling against it. I I definitely think this list is good at shooting. It is not so good at taking the hits. You definitely want to be skirting the range four band. You don't want to be putting your guys. Um, in danger and when you are you want to have the nimble vigilance dodge package ready to go um so that is, that is how i'm feeling about that and uh to kind of then segue into our synergy statistic um i'm giving this list a four out of five i think the synergy in this list is pretty high um so let, let's talk about that for a minute um we've got cassian Jin, k2 and the pathfinders all of those units work incredibly well together. They all can infiltrate, which means we can place them in a forward position on the battlefield and kind of like build an outpost if we want to. Um, you need to be very careful with infiltrate. Uh, it, you don't want to put them in places where they're just going to get blown off the board immediately. I recommend um, when playing a list like this or building a list that has units with infiltrate in it that you're going to take advantage of the vast majority of the time when you are infiltrating when you're learning the list you need to be putting everything behind line of sight blockers um and that will make infiltrate feel a lot better i promise um you know and not only that but like once you have a critical mass of units that can infiltrate the danger of infiltrating gets a little bit less because they kind of have to commit to attacking your infiltrate units as opposed to being able to like just get in there and kill that one infiltrating unit you have um so there's also that aspect to it too so i think um the infiltrate package here is strong it's really good um it might not be on the level of like a triple uh, imperial special forces iden infiltrate package um but it's very close and it it you know, the characters here, I mean, Jin's not the greatest character in the world, but Cassian, K2, the Pathfinders, they're they're all very strong offensively. So um, that's a great package. The second synergistic portion of this list is, you know, Cassian and Jin's command cards synergize with everything this list is doing. Jin's teamwork command card allows you to spit out extra tokens, which are core units or Cassian or K2 can can use you know if you if Jin teamworks with Cassian or K2 
all three of them get the tokens because of teamwork assuming they're in range um so you can kind of do like a like a triple teamwork deal um Jin's three pip allows you to really uh you know we've got all trooper units you can ignore suppression for the turn um it's really powerful all of, all of Cassian's command cards really benefit all of the units in this list for giving orders, free recovers. Um, the last stand is amazing. Um, so, you know, all of their cards are incredibly synergistic with each other. Additionally, um, we have our Vigilance Dodge package, right? So Jin has Vigilance, which means two units get to keep Vigilance tokens each turn, or, well, two core units, or one other unit um, so you can keep a vigilance on her if you want or you can keep two vigilance on your rebel trooper units you know um, the in this list you kind of have to make the choice between the two um, there are definitely ways you could set that up so that it could be a little bit more synergistic and you just like keep dodge tokens on your rebel troopers with two rebel officers the whole game um, but clearly we're taking Jin in this list I think if I were to like break the theme out of this list I might replace Jin with just two rebel officers with vigilance and you would just have um, dodge tokens on your core units the entire game um, which is incredibly powerful so synergy here is very high four out of five it is it's a very synergistic list and it works really well that way um, our l last numerical uh, rating for this list that we are going to give it is the swing power we talked about. And that was really like, how hard can you last first, um, in any given turn, assuming like optimal conditions. Um, we gave our, our list last time, I believe a four out of five, um, because your swing power was like Vader double melee um into like force choke force push vader's might it, it was just it was really powerful the best thing we really can be doing with this list is like last firsting with bistan pathfinders it's not really what this list is doing um this list is definitely more about like getting consistent chip damage in you know from your dlts from your pathfinder unit from your snipers um you know, K2 might be the actual best last verse you can do, but he's got to be, like, meleeing things for that to be the case. And he doesn't have Pierce. Um, this is definitely not a... This is more of a positional list as opposed to a list where you're um, really trying to, like, slam them with last verse. That's not saying you shouldn't last verse, just to be clear. But it's not really something that is going to win you the game a ton um i would recommend making sure you last first with your pathfinders if at all possible that's what the uplink is there for um and it's there so you can step out at the end of the turn take a shot and you know play crack shot or whatever and uplink them and step right back in um and and that is an important part of keeping them alive uh so Swing power is two out of five. I don't think it's that great. It's not what this list is about. That's okay. Um, so overall, you know, uh, this list has three of our five categories at two out of five, one at three out of five, and one at four out of five. I think that this list is playable. I don't think it's incredibly strong. I do think, like, you know, if you're good at Legion, you're going to be able to play this list, and it's going to do just fine. Um, a lot of the units in here are going to melt under, you know, um, pretty consistent direct firepower. So you got to be a little bit careful with your positioning. Rebels these days really, really need line of sight blockers. You know, um, anything with white saves are taking a lot of damage these days. And, and Rebels don't have a ton of bodies to back up the, you know... Some, to take a six six hit shot and and stay on the table so keep that in mind when you're playing a list like this um it's definitely fun definitely super thematic and uh you know you gotta play these lists a, a lot to to get a hang of them um so that is our breakdown of our rogue one themed list um overall this is probably like an average three out of five list um not maybe maybe like 2.7 to three it's, it's probably like a c minus um if we were grading it like that um it's okay and 
that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm sorry it took so long to get this out. The first half of this I actually recorded like a month ago. Uh, was pretty sure I deleted it. I have like some stuff like backed up to the cloud and I searched around uh, a bit and finally found it. So um, here it is. And we should be getting Legion list building episode three out in a much more rapid fashion. Because um, I was kind of uninspired to finish this since I lost it and couldn't find it um so thank you for listening i hope this is helpful um we'll be back with legion list building episode three where i think we're going to tackle um separatists and what they look like on the table clearly they're very different than both of the factions we've talked about thus far um that should be an interesting uh conversation to have so have fun uh legion on and i will see you next time Oh